Yes. Today, we're going to talk about the power of money and why most people don't know or will never know because of bad habits. One of the things that you guys got to understand is the first thing you got to do is learn how to manage yourself not becoming pathologically cheap because there, there, there seems to be that people go too far i got a net worth of four or five or six million dollars but i live morning, like a pauper i buy uh, used clothes us today at from my goodwill right, and you know many people look at Empire that's College, the path to becoming wealthy for many years and i'm telling you i've studied millionaires mission. i've studied billionaires of health, the Dr. path to becoming wealthy Howard is to Zucker, create to something that benefits Murphy, other people we'll to say, not to, to pathologically to his frugal, you know pathologically uh, frugal, frugality, frugality where you're living on beans uh, and rice for, here today. This for is the rest of your life because this is one of the things i've seen uh, that has happened with these people week, who participate in the frugal pathway. Let me they become very cheap people. I can and there are many people who like, that's the way to do it. Are, you know, I I, I'm not going to buy a Lambo. It's nice to know I have the money in the bank if I wanted to. On this in those type of games. The that's one of the things the that has happened. Continues. We still and also, many of these pathologically up. cheap people have paper net worth. They don't have fiscal cash net worth where they can go to the bank and draw millions of dollars. So, once again, I've seen someone literally five-year business have $10 million in the bank after five years. That, you know, because uh, they called me up and I was like, man, you know, I got all this money. What should I do? And we went through the whole process of, well, you know, this this money. And this was after the taxes were paid. Ten million cash in the bank. And I said, well, now's the time to ask yourself, how do you want to live? Where do you want to live? So he went ahead and got him a nice house, paid cash, got the vehicles that he wanted, paid cash. And then he started working on another business. This is how I went. And once you get to the power of money, not the power of credit. I know there, you know, there, there's these um, things that go on, on Facebook. Would you rather have a hundred or a million dollars or a hundred credit score? And people are like, I really have a credit score. Bruh. One million cash versus an eight hundred dollar eight hundred credit score, and most people are like, I, I will take the credit score. This is because America is drunk on credit, drunk on credit. Don't know how to operate with cash. Don't know how to operate with a cash budget. Don't know how to put together a budget. Don't know how to put together an operational budget without credit. And credit is not the thing. Credit is a tool. Leverage can make you rich. But when you develop a business that has a healthy cash flow process, that's going to make you richer faster. Like, look at all these people who have rental real estate. And they're getting, like, rents of fourteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. But because they're leveraged, there's only a positive cash flow of two or three hundred bucks, which if they're smart, they need to put in the bank in case something goes wrong with the house. You know, <clears throat> a lot of people don't have, you know, I, I, I met a real estate investor who was getting 50 percent cash flow from her rents because her mortgages were so low. You know, a mortgage was six hundred and fifty. She rent out the house for uh, twelve hundred. So she had substantial cash flow but you know after she got up to four houses it got a little onerous uh there's someone here who has real estate stocks and bonds and a job so let's, let's talk about the power of money and you know because there, there's a group of what i call paper net worth millionaires these are people who have you know, 
uh, paper net worth. They have rental properties that are leveraged. They have stocks and bonds, and they still have a job. And Because I'm going to tell you why they still have a job. They're afraid to leave that job. They don't know how to operate in a business mindset or a business owner environment. Because if you have that job, I guarantee you that, you know, because I'm talking to this individual, it's supposed to have six houses, a seven-figure net worth. That job is holding you back, bruh. You, you got six rental houses, seven-figure portfolio. Why do you still have a damn job? That makes no sense to someone like me who's not had a job in 20 years. I guarantee you that job's holding you back. Why you still have a job, bruh? What you scared of? Why you afraid to come out here in these wicked economic streets? I'm going to tell you why. Most of these people are very comfortable making peanuts. Yeah, because see, once again, once you understand the power of money and owning your time, because like, you know, I, I've heard all the arguments. You know, I still have a job because I love my job. I like having something to do. That job takes 40, 160 hours a month of your time. I couldn't run my business as I have to spend 160 hours over here doing X, Y, and Z. I'm telling you, you know, so let that job go and manage your portfolio and man, and go ahead and get some more rentals. You got six rentals. You said, uh, I'm going to have these six rentals because then I, that's the most I can handle without a property management company. Bro, you should be able to have 10, handle 10 rentals. You should be able to. So you got a lot of people out here who are afraid of pure, unadulterated responsibility because that's what they're afraid of. That's why they cling to that job. That job is a security blanket. It's a safety blanket. You know, if these things don't work out, I still got a job. They don't have faith in themselves. They don't have the faith in the power of money because, you know, I got rid of my job before I even got to seven figures. Let's talk about that. You can get to very good income without being a millionaire. Let me say this again. You're doing 150, 200, $300,000 a month. That's very good income. Or two, three hundred, $400,000 a year. That's very good income. You're not a millionaire. That income gives you the tools to become a millionaire over time. That sets you up to make a lot of money. That creates a situation where you can get to, you can become financially elite. That's the first stage. And a lot of people Ain't ready for that. Scott Bevan, if you're learning from the job you're working from, are you really trading time for money? Let's ask this question. If you got a special job that's giving you specialized skills, you're learning. But most folks don't have those kind of jobs. Most folks don't even have careers. But, you know, we're talking about the power of money. The power of money is when you go to the bank, the banker knows your name. Even before you're introduced, because, see, this is something else. Bankers, the, the bank branch manager looks at all the high value accounts every month. They go through them. So they'll know who you are before you, as soon as you walk in the branch, as soon as they hear your name. Oh, how you doing, Mr. Cameron? That's the power of money. People respect 
money. Repo respect the ability to generate income because bankers know the truth with these loan apps. They know that a lot of business owners, you know, I had this conversation with my banker a few years ago, that a lot of business owners depreciate their business so there's no profit and the bank can only give you a loan on profit. That's all they can do, man. They can't, they can't just uh, look at your tax returns and look at all your, you know, they're going to they're gonna look at it like, okay, a deduction means that, you know, you didn't make that money. That's what it means. And this is one of the hardest things that a lot of entrepreneurs have to deal with in terms of getting funding because they're playing the tax game and they're not, because I, I had a client that I had to help with this and she was just paying God crazy taxes, but this put her in the position to get $3 million loan because she showed a profit and the $3 million loan next year eliminated her taxes. Because see, a lot of folks don't know how to use loans to eliminate taxes. You take out a business loan for like a million bucks. Until your business makes a million dollars and fifty dollars, fifty dollars above that million dollars, it's made not a profit because that loan was a business expense. This is something I routinely do. Uh, this year, I've cut my tax bill by $350,000 because I took out business loans for the company. Didn't need them, but they ain't the point. The point is those business loans offset my taxes. This is one of the games that a lot of people don't tell you because they don't know how to do this. You know, because one of the things with uh, having a job is a job is really good to get you to a certain level. Uh, like this attorney who was making $270,000, he just had a really good job. And he was living on 80% of his income, which is $80,000 or $70,000. And, you know, one of the things I preach is you want to ratchet your income up so you can ratchet your baseline because many for many years my income was like three to four thousand dollars a month that's all i took out the business because once you have a business and once you understand the power of money you can realize having like a huge salary is going to kill a lot of money now there's a time to have a huge salary and there's a time not to like i said this year, I've uh, saved $350,000 off my tax bill because of loans. I may take out another one. Because th those loans are going to come at, they're going to offset the profit. This is one of the games you got to understand with, you know, and this is why you need good credit. This is why every business owner needs good credit. So they can play the loan game because if you have high cash flow, you go to the bank and the bank looks at your credit report like, oh, you don't have no debt. I know. I just want to take out this loan for business purposes. Okay. Approved. And then you're playing a whole new money game. You're playing a new money shell game. You're playing a different kind of game. Prince Diamond, if you don't need the money, what did you do with it? I put it in the bank. What do you think I'm paying the loan back with? I'm paying them back their money, plus I have to pay them a little bit, you know, with my money. See, one of the things you got to understand is this is why I have several different bank accounts. I just put that money in the operating account. Every month, write a check back out to the bank. See, I mean, once again, if you have several different checking accounts, you have several different bank accounts, there ain't no problem where to put the money. 
And on the loan application, it asked me what I was going to do with the money. And I said I was going to use it for marketing. So if I didn't, if I used that money for anything other than marketing and then pay it back, I would be committing fraud. But if I can leave that money in the account, pay them back their own money. That's how the game is played. Because the best time for a business owner to get a loan is when you don't need one. So you can establish a track record. And this is a hard concept to get because most people, I want funding. I want to get some credit cards so I can go out and use them for a real estate. So you're using all of your credit instantly. And I'm saying don't do that. Get your cash flow up. Yeah, you could go out and make several loans w that you don't need. That's funny. And this is, you know, uh, one of the things about money. You take out a loan, $350,000. You put that money back in the bank. You don't touch it. You don't ball out. You don't do anything stupid with it. You use the money to pay them back. You establish a track record and you establish trust and reliability. Because like I said, I don't really need loans or business credit to run my business, but I know the power of it. So I've started building it for the future because it's always good to have the ability to do something whether you need it or not. In speaking of that. We got this going on tonight. 50% off of anything at Hustlers Kung Fu. The promo code is money. Direct yourself to HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com and grab yourself a piece of goodness. Go ahead and figure out some that you need. I would suggest the basic money financial course because everybody needs that. Because this is, you know, I want you guys to be cash people. I want you guys to have 50, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 thousand dollars cash money in the bank. I want you guys to have no debt. I want you guys next car you buy, you pay cash. You in and out of the dealership in 30 minutes. I want you to become a cash person. Because once you become a cash person, it's going to be hard to go back to that other stuff. So once again, you can get 50% off of anything at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills. Use the promo code MONEY. So I American indoctrination of credit. Life or business? You don't recommend using credit cards to leverage real estate for down payment? Uh, actually, if you don't know what you're doing, no, I don't recommend that. If, you, if it's going to take all of your credit for a down payment, because one of the things you should be using if you're going to use business credit, you should be using it for flips. You know, if you're going to use it for a down payment, that suggests you're going to buy and hold. How are you going to pay that money back? So I would use business credit for flips only.
Erica Goo Cole, man, this is true. If you're speaking, been taking hits on taxes in order to get the cash from the banks levy, then no more hits. Can I buy that car on a low interest credit card? No! See, I know that the American credit system has institutionalized you. Where you think that the only way you can do something, like, I'm going to tell you. The first time I paid cash for a car, I felt like a G. It was a brand new 540 BMW, $55,000. Walked in the dealership with cash money. It kind of freaked them out a little bit because we had to go to the bank. The bank had to count the money and they deposited the money in the bank because the dealer was, dealer was freaked out. Went back to the dealership. My car was detailed and ready and waiting on me. Signed the papers, drove off. I felt like such a G that I was able to pay cash for my car. I was like, man, this is living. This is life. So I want you to feel like a G. No, no credit cards. Because the power to go to a dealership and buy a new car, cash money, and really you can negotiate from a position Attitude money is now 50K, not 10K. Let's see. All right. I don't know why the audio went out. I don't know. Okay. I don't know why that happened. So I want you guys to get you some money. Get you some cash. Because there's a, there's a few people who become millionaires who've never seen a million dollars cash. They've got that from having assets, rental property, trucks, businesses these folks have never seen a lot of cash and they're, they're not accustomed to cash i want you guys to become cash players because once you become a cash player once you get rid of the regular bills credit card bills you get rid of student loans you get rid of your mortgage you get rid of um, your car payment your check is a lot you don't have no bills you're like, man, I got a lot of money here. You can see these checks stack up. Uh, let me give you the money plan for men who are getting married. <clears throat> and this is why you got to step your game up. You got to step your game up to support a salary. Your wife will work. I don't believe in subsidizing grown people where I'm paying all the bills and they get to do what they want with their money. That, that's not a partnership. That's not a marriage. What she will do is you like, hey, baby, I'm paying the bills. I'm being the man of the house. I got you. But you're going to get us. So we're going to take your check, all of your checks, and we're going to put them in this account with both our names on it. And once this account gets to a certain level, we're going to buy rent, rental, commercial rental real estate. That's the plan. So she will, you know, and, you know, in case you break up, you know, she did that. She's built a lot of the family wealth she's contributed so you know this this is because uh this is how i'm going to do it next time like uh, i'm not going to have someone living with me uh rent free that ain't happening again uh, essentially that that's what's going like okay i got the bills i got your bills i got all this this is what you need to do you need to put your your checks in this account and every year we're going to go out and get a rental property I may throw some funds in there with yours and we can see what we can do. Yeah, that window's not working. I don't know why that window's not working.
So I want you guys to be cash players. I want you to come to the Church of G, get your cash up, get your debt, eradicate your debt. Because, you know, a lot of people are trying to skirt debt well, they have a lot of debt and then go into an investment. But see, all right, let's say you make $50,000 a year. And your debt is costing you $2,000 per month. It's half your income. Imagine if you were able to invest that whole $2,000 towards uh, wealth building activities versus you got $2,000 going to satisfy debt payments and you got $200 bucks going toward investments. You know, one, literally two months of investing that 2000 is more money than you invest all year with that 200 So that's the power of money. You know, a lot of people don't understand, before you get into the stock market, before you get into a business, you need to be debt free. And this is what's crippling so many people. They can't make any moves. I mean, I, I'll tell y'all something like uh, I had a little setback and they're giving me this medication, which has got me down to 236 pounds. Uh, it's a makes me sleepy. Like I spend most of the day sleeping. I ain't lost nothing because I still got cash coming in. The power of cash and no debt. You know, I was out in the garage. I was just like, man, I got these two cars. I got all this stuff that's paid off. I have no debt payments. Prince Diamond, with low interest rates, they ain't home stuff on the market to buy. Uh, I will say the real estate market is very healthy, very, very, very much moving because uh, the Atlanta real estate market is super hot, which I refuse to participate into it. I'm probably going to buy something this winter because I've been watching it every day. I've been looking at Zillow. And I'm seeing stuff going two days, five days. And, you know, it's not deals. I'm looking for a deal. So I will sit on my money until I find a deal. So, you know, you want I want you guys to become cash people. I want you guys to have access to cash. I want you guys to have cash in your bank accounts. I want you guys to have cash on your person, you know, at least 200 to 1000 bucks. I want you guys to have free and clear credit cards. This cash lifestyle is amazing. And the good thing is you don't even have to be a millionaire to benefit from the cash lifestyle. Because a lot of people are like, hey, I want to be a millionaire. Okay. How are you going to be a millionaire? What's your plan? See, I want to be a millionaire. I just want to be a millionaire. I want to have that status. It don't mean nothing. And also, say this. I want to be a cash money millionaire. I don't want to be a paper millionaire. Big, big difference between the two. We got a bunch of cash money millionaires in my neighborhood. And uh, one, of the thing, one of the reasons that many uh, paper millionaires are very low key is they don't really have the money to stun flex. They got a high net worth. They got maybe a lot of property. They don't have no cash. And they don't, they're, you know, most people are not used to dealing with large sums of cash. They freak out. Like, um, I have a friend and he told me, he took $180,000 and went out and bought this Porsche. And his wife freaked out. Now, here, here's my friend. He owns a business, house paid for. House paid for. He got stocks, bonds, probably a net worth of about $5 million. And, you know, he was just putting cash in the bank. One day he realized he had $900,000 cash in the bank. And he took 180 and went out and got himself a Porsche. And his wife, she got paranoid. She's like, you know, because he brought me and I was like, you know, this house is paid for, right? You know, he has healthy cash flow, right? 
she was freaking out. It's like, that money could have bought a house. I was like, you know, he, he may do that later. Oh, Rod, for real estate, I am definitely waiting to win her because uh, Zillow is crazy and you got all these people who have messed up, who've overspent, went over budget, trying to liquidate their properties. You got that crowd. So I expect it to get a little bit better. I think, expect the market to thin out. So that's what I'm hoping to see. But the, the power of money is why, you know, very few people come in here and tell you, um, well, the bank, I was going to take this cash money to, the, to this dealership. The bank didn't have the money in the bank. You ain't getting these kind of stories from the rest of these folks because they ain't living like this. They're operating on credit. And they're operating on loans and they're operating on funding because they don't have no cash. Once you become a cash person, get some cash in the bank, get some cash on you, cash on your, your free up credit cards. Life is so different. Life is just so stress free. Like I said, I'm on this medication that makes me sleep most of the day. I'm like, I'm sleeping like a baby. I don't have no stress. I'm not wondering how these bills are going to be paid because truth be told, I don't have a lot of bills. I don't have a lot of payments. I have no car payments. I write one check per month. Actually two, and that's for this house. Everything else comes off the credit card. Pay all my bills for my credit card and get points. All right two checks per month. Uh, my business stuff, I've scaled down. I stopped spending Facebook advertising because uh, it really wasn't working out the way that I wanted it to. But I want you guys to come to the cash side. I want you guys to become cash buyers. I want you guys to become cash citizens because, you know, the easiest path is to start a service business. You know, go to Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills, get the basic financial management course, and start a service business. That can put you on the path to becoming a millionaire. Because, one, because see, the thing is, the average person, they get more money, they just jack it up. More money means more stuff. They'd be looking for stuff to spend money on. They'd be... Like, all right, all right, all right. Uh, I'm trying to uh, spend money on this. I'm trying to spend money on that. They'd be looking for ways to spend that money because they're not comfortable holding cash. A lot of people, I remember one time when I was between places and I went out and got myself a roommate and it was rent time and I didn't have any checks on me, but I had the cash on me. So I just gave her the cash. It was like 600 bucks. And she's like, Ooh, I'm like a drug dealer. She wasn't used to having sick. You know, most folks just are not accustomed to having cash. Cash makes the world go round, baby. And once you go ahead and put yourself on a cash position, because, like, you know, when I said I was going to pay cash for my rental property, which I am, I wasn't going to stop at one. And then the, the credit institutionalized people, no, 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 don't do that. What you do is you take $40,000, put it down, and go out and get five mortgages and be leveraged. Here's the, here's the funny thing about this. Because... The cash flow position of the mortgages, because, you know, I would make more cash money by having one rental and getting all of that cash free and clear because there's no mortgage. All they see is like, I can get more rentals, then these houses are going to appreciate faster, and I'm going to make my money on the equity, so in two to three years I can sell them, make more money. 
And also, one of the things is I, I'll plan on selling my properties. I plan on keeping them in the family trust. So it's a whole different perspective that you get when you are a cash person. Man, I got 10,000 cash out the bank to ask me three times if I want to cash your chick. I was like, no. Erica, the banks be trying to keep that cash. When the deals are coming, some of these builders are broke. That's what I'm looking, that's what I'm waiting on, because you know. I, I'm going to wait on the deal because the thing is, if it ain't a deal, it ain't worth doing to me. And also, you know, get with these cash, get with this cash. You know, uh, I got a friend. We may w work on some deals together because he makes like three million a year. So he got nothing but money. Makes three million a year. Ain't married. Does what he wants with his money. You, you know, so we, we may do some stuff together. So we will see what kind of deals can I shake a leg and get because essentially the, the market is just very hot right now. Stuff's going quick. You're seeing all types of people into the market and that, that's just not for me. But I, I have a feeling because I've been looking at some deals out of state, too. Because, like, you know, Michigan, you can get houses for $30,000 and charge $800 rent for these $30,000 houses. I can buy 10 So that's like $8,000 a month positive cash flow. Plus, you know, I would have to get a, a property management company up there. But that's something else I'm thinking about because when you do the math, I can get a house for $30,000 that cash flows at 800 bucks a month. I get 10 of them. It's $8,000 a month. Appliance boot camp, when the deals are already here, my contractor called me this weekend and I said I didn't work for him. I think you got three properties. What is a good investment with $10,000 cash? Uh, I recommend that people actually come up with fifty to a hundred to two hundred to three hundred thousand. Uh, I would say keep your ten thousand dollars in the bank and start a service business and get more get higher cash flow. We ain't buying no Bitcoin. That's something else too. I notice all my people who made money from their business, real money, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100K a month. They weren't interested in no Bitcoin. It was poor people who were interested in Bitcoin. It was poor people going out, taking out mortgages on their house to buy some Bitcoin. It was not seasoned business people. Um, you know, the folks who know how to make money are not interested in Bitcoin. You know, the folks who spent millions of dollars buying Bitcoin very cheap years ago, that's a whole different thing. Like, you know, if you spent a million dollars and each Bitcoin costs you $80, you're playing a whole different game. Uh, King, I don't have to buy XRP. I make money from my business. I have no need to participate in cryptocurrency. Because I already got money, man. I've had this conversation before with y'all. Like, buy some Bitcoin. That's what the smart money is. No, the smart money is, is in going out and creating businesses and providing services and selling them at a markup to the public. That's where the real money is. Out the 2,600 billionaires, none of them were Bitcoin billionaires. Not a one. 
out of the 20 millionaires, you got a 20 million millionaires, you got a few Bitcoin millionaires who just got lucky. But the vast majority of cash money millionaires own businesses that sell products and services. That's where the money is, not some funky Bitcoin or XRP where you got to buy a little bit each month to accumulate it. I mean, like the difference between a service business that makes you $5,000 a month and putting your money in Bitcoin, at the end of the year, you made $60,000. Bitcoin, you could have lost money. Let's see, what is Bitcoin? Price of Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin is under $8,000. It has slowly been deteriorating for the last few weeks. You know, you buy Bitcoin, you hope that the market corrects. You hope that it goes up. You own a business, you out here making money. You control that by how hard you market. You can control that, how you put together your business model. I am Nate, I know. Because you know, one of the things is I'm not big on cryptocurrency. I don't need that crypto, you know, and this is one of the things. So if you guys understood the power of money, you would not be so crazy about Bitcoin, XRP, and all this other stuff. You would have a service business that generates you cash money every month versus hoping to buy something that will appreciate. I am Nate. We don't do Bitcoin over here, bro. Screw Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a joke to me because whenever I ask somebody, how much money, you know, you make in Bitcoin, you know, I know someone who's a miner and I think he, he mines. I don't know how many coins he mines per month. Frederick, cryptocurrency seems like a flashback of the gold rush at this point. It was a bubble. It still is a bubble and people still sticking to it because they, they're, there's all these ramifications that the cryptocurrency is going to replace cash money. They ain't going to happen for decades. Let's say this again. The cryptocurrency is not going to replace cash money, the dollar bill, the U.S. currency uh, in it for decades. Veggios. Nah, man, I don't mess with no Bitcoin. If I had the option of having Bitcoin and some rental property, I would take rental property. If I had the option of having some stocks over Bitcoin, I would take the stocks. Bitcoin is just too inconsistent, man. Bitcoin is just um, crazy. But once again, I want you guys to get yourself some cash money. Get yourself in the position where you have cash money. I used the markets to store cash for two years then pulled all my fund to mobile wash and other businesses. That's, that's, that's innovative. Exactly. People just looking to get rich quick. Pretty much. That, that is the, the promise of Bitcoin. Because, you know, it is October and you got people out here is like, Bitcoin's going to be the $30,000 in 2019. We got November and we got December. I don't see it. Bitcoin can be back to where it was at the beginning of the year. No, I haven't gone anywhere. Thinking about going on a skiing trip, though. I don't know. Think I can get some excellent drone footage. I don't know.
you know, traveling abroad is a, a wonderful thing. I may go to Colorado, steamboat, be around some snow bunnies. King, I don't need crypto. You don't understand my position. Okay, you don't understand my position. I have monthly healthy cash flow that if I wanted to buy a new car every month, I could. I don't need no crypto. For me to divert those funds, because right now I'm stacking cash to get in real estate, to divert those funds to crypto would be asinine and stupid. So I would take money that I made that was free and clear to put into this scam. I ain't doing it. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. Um, makes no sense to me to um, move that money over there. I don't know, man. I may just hang around the ski resort, pull out the drone, do some videos. I don't know. I don't know. Because uh, once again, I've got to, because like I've lost a lot of weight. I'm down to 236, and I, ha I haven't been working out, so I got to start working out again because my legs are skinny, my arms are skinny, still got a little bit of a gut. I'm like, okay, that's where I really need to lose this weight. That needs to go. So I'm going to start doing some exercising probably tomorrow. I'm not putting 10% in crypto. I'm just not. One of the things I'm going to do is put my money in something I understand. I understand real estate. Buy a house, keep the house up, put a renter in there, make consistent monthly income. Bitcoin doesn't make monthly income. And this is one of the reasons that I'm in the position I am. I put money into things that make money, like my business. That, that's one of the things. So one of the things you got to understand is how money is. Stefan, how do you find time to exercise, hustle, build a business, and have a full-time job? I, I fell off on the working out, you know, since the heart attack, that's gotten very dicey and I've gone through many changes, but I'm going to start a new program this week. I know I am Nate, they're obsessed with it. Um, you know, good tenants. How many of you guys were renting during the last recession? And how many of you guys relate? You get a few people who fall upon hard time, but most folks, they pay their rent on time. Most people pay their rent on time. I was listening to this property man on YouTube. He said he had one eviction in five years. One eviction in five years. Most people pay their rent on time. Most tenants are good tenants. Most people are good tenants. You know, you got these scammers. Respond, doctor. I do intermittent fasting on a meal a day. That was today. I did one meal today. Because I don't really feel like eating a lot. Damn, do you spend any time with the ladies? I got two, man. Bro, how much should I pay for a thirty thousand dollars house? If it's a thirty thousand dollars house, you should pay. You should try to get that bad boy for twenty. This is the way you should be rolling.
So get you some money, man, because during this next recession, everything's about to go on sale. People will be on sale. Houses will be on sale. Workers, uh, materials be on sale. Sugar babies will be on sale. You can get whatever. Respond, doctor. Do you recommend Shopify, Amazon, FBA for side hustles? Um, I recommend a service business over any one of those because both with Amazon and Shopify, a lot of stuff is out of your control. Uh, right now, I, I've got a lot of friends who are Amazon FBA sellers, and the mood has changed over the last two years because I did these videos, no eBay, no Amazon, more money, and I outlined what was going to happen with these businesses because, you know, people were doing crazy stuff. Like, they were running their business on these razor-thin margins and talking about that they were going to keep scaling up and keep scaling up. One of the first rules to run a good business is creating a healthy profit margin. And with this internet stuff and Uber and Vine and Lime and all of these scooter cycles, they're literally running their business to gain market share and they're running at a loss. They're losing millions of dollars that investors are putting back in the business. LP. Hey, I'm, I may check it out. I may book me a trip. Get me some ski gear. Just hang out at the bar and talk to people. So we will see. So one of the things that you got to understand is the power of cash. Once you get affiliated and indoctrinated in the cash position, where you always have some cash, where you always got money in the bank, your life will change. You will just be living a different life. Much, much different life. I mean, it's going to be glorious. All right, so I'm getting ready to get out of here. So go to hustlerskungfulifeskills.com. Get 50% off of anything using the promo code MONEY. So that's what's going down. All right. I will see you guys.